the new Black Wall Street. Do it right, build wealth, live life, economic empowerment, real tips, insight on the new Black Wall Street. Yeah. It's on the new Black Wall Street. Who's your host? All right, my beautiful people, this is the ERGJ, Certified Financial Educator here with New Black Wall Street. We're going to be talking about the attitudes of wealth today. That's right, the attitudes of wealth. This is a little excerpt that I wrote probably about three years ago, and I just came across it again. I said, it's time for me to redistribute or reshare uh, this information. Of course, today's episode is brought to you by True Detergent. That's right, True Detergent, black-owned and manufactured right here in the Atlanta area. We are um, doing free delivery in the Atlanta area as well, 101 ounces for $15.00. I mean, it's 15 cents per wash. Go ahead and give us a call at 678-851-2400. We'll deliver it right to your doorstep. Go ahead and get your true. Make the switch. What's going on, A-Ron? What's going on, Justin? How are you? So um, real quick, while we're waiting on people to join, go ahead and like, go ahead and share, whatever you got to do. Uh, it's going to be very important for them to understand. We're going to be talking about the attitudes of wealth. What's your attitude towards wealth? And I've got a couple people that are here with us in Club Millie, so I already know their attitude, but I know some other people, they need to check their stinking thinking. Now, here's the deal. Club Millie, as I just mentioned, uh, that is actually a club that we started, and uh, our goal is to help 1,000 people save and invest $1,000 this year. you got to ask yourself, are you going to be one of those 1,000? Because once we get to 1,000, the club is... <laughs> no longer, no, no more access available, no more capacity in that as well. And you can actually find information out about that by uh, clicking on the link above where uh, we have uh, some meetings set up so that you can hear the full plan itself. Uh, but our goal for February was 100 members, and we already got 50. So that means uh, we are way ahead of pace, and people are jumping aboard. So uh, basically, at the end of the day, it's a $20 decision. you got to ask yourself, do I want to be surrounded by like-minded people who are talking about pushing the agenda forward of group economics and building the black community. Uh, that's an opportunity for you as well. Uh, I've actually just released an exclusive. So uh, for Black Wealth Month, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 20 people and I'm going to walk you through what it takes for you to quit your job and to finance your own freedom. Many of you guys hate your job. You, you talk about it all the time, or you just wish you could do what you really want to love to do, what you really love to do. So I'm talking about how you can actually free your time, how you can get to a position where you can say where you can fire your boss. But more so than that, I'm really be talking about where you're headed in the future and how you can actually uh, generate multiple streams of income. I remember when I left my job, I went from making $150 a day, which is basically $20 an hour, right? 20 times 8, 150. Uh, to $158 an hour. So how did I do that? I'm going to be talking to you guys about that in our exclusive session. So, so it's very limited seating. I'm only doing this probably one time this whole year. I really didn't expect to do it, but I was pushed to do it um, for Black Wealth Month. Of course, you guys may call it Black History, but we call it Black Wealth because we're making history uh, this month. So if you want to be included in that, uh, early bird, RSVPs are out. And of course, the longer that you wait, the more that you pay. So if you're saying, hey, I want to get a seat, I want to have this conversation. I want to map out my future. That's an opportunity for you there. And then also on Tuesday coming up this week, we have our intro to Forex. So if you're interested in learning about currency trading, uh, the biggest market, $53.8 billion of traded every day, uh, then you can learn about Forex. That's dealing with foreign exchange, currency, uh, the, the dollar versus the yen, things like that. You want to start to understand what they're talking about? Well, you need to sign up for that class right there, and that's going to be on Tuesday. So uh, that's dwindling down as well. But at any rate, uh, today, what I wanted to talk about was the attitudes of wealth. That's right, the attitudes of wealth, because I believe that there are four attitudes towards wealth, and we're going to talk about those today. And as we go through these, you got to ask yourself, what is my attitude towards wealth? And I'm talking about be serious and be honest, because it's okay if you if you're honest, because if you're honest, that means that you know where you are and you can actually grow from there. But if you're dishonest, that means that you're deluding yourself. And if you're deluding yourself, you're in no position to start talking about building wealth, only by deluding others. And that is not enriching. You want to be enriching. If you enrich others, then you too can get rich. If you serve others, then you too will be served. You see what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a, it's a domino effect. How you actually acquire wealth has a big impact on how you are actually able to keep and build wealth. But it starts with your mind. Everybody put in the comments below, wealth begins in the mind. That's right. Wealth begins in in the mind. You must be wealthy in your mind long before you're wealthy in your wallet. And once I came across this one principle that I had stinking thinking as it relates to money, as I had poor mentality as it relates to riches, once I turned that around, my whole life turned around. 
And I want to share with you some things that I learned that hopefully will help you as well. What's going on, Anthony Howie Horace? What's up, man? Salute. So let's get into this, man. I got to read from my little thing because I wrote this a long time ago. And it's, it's funny, guys, when you write something and you come back to it, you're like, man, I was thinking about this back in whatever year. You know, you start to see your progression when you take notes, when you track your progress. That's why a journal is good. Um, I, I, you know, if you got a planner, you keep your planners over time, store those things. You can go back and look what were you doing. That's a good thing to do. Track your progress. And you can, it feels good when you know that a year ago you're not in the same place. It feels bad when you look back a year ago and you're in the same place. <laughs> Track your progress. All right. So here's what I wrote back in 2014. Okay. This is November of 2014. I wrote this. I said, the most difficult thing to change about a person is their mind. The most difficult thing to change about a person is their mind. And here's the deal, guys. Like, if we could get, you know, if we can get the top 5%, the top 10% of our community to just change their mind, then the rest will come. If we can just get the top 10% of our community to change their mind, we actually change the whole community. We just need 10%. I know everybody isn't going to come. We just need, we actually only need about 5%. Get 5% of our community to change their mind. Now, what do I mean by change their mind? I'm not saying that our community is broke. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm talking about our piss poor mentality where we want to operate in silos. We want to compete with each other when we should be collaborating. So, 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 so if we can get our, our community 5% to actually change their mind on how we're going to operate and work together. If you are me, we ain't got no beef unless you just one of those people. But I'm talking about if you're a good person and you're serious about pushing the agenda forward, I want to work with you. Now, you know, there's going to be a way on how you actually approach me. If you approach me the wrong way, or I approach you the wrong way, well, we're not going to work out, because we don't have the same vision, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to work. I, I want like-minded people that we're going to work with, and we're going we're gonna to build this thing. So, so changing our mind on how we operate. Now, Ms. Jacqueline said that our community is wealthy. Yes, we are wealthy. It's not, we're not broke. Now, we make bad decisions with money. We make bad decisions in relationships. We make bad decisions with our money, but we're not broke. You know what I mean? We may have a poor mindset, but we're not broke. We just operate from that mentality, and we find ourselves, you know what I'm saying, with less money at the end of the month than we should. You know what I mean? We have more month at the end of the money than our money. You know what I mean? So, we're not broke. We just need to change our mind. Again, I'm back in November 2014. What was I thinking back then? At any rate, the most difficult thing to change about a person is their mind. Have you ever wondered why wealth appears so hard to accumulate? A good place to find answers is, your attitude, is in your attitude towards wealth. So, we're going to check to see which one of these attitudes represents your philosophy towards wealth. So have you ever wondered why wealth seems so hard to accumulate? I was thinking about this back in 2014. So I am, you know, I'm just going, I'm just reminiscing right now, guys. So don't, don't, don't mind me. Have you ever considered why wealth seems so hard to attain? Especially, especially for someone who doesn't have it. Now, we understand that if you, if you learn how to get it, it doesn't seem very hard to keep getting it. Okay, we understand that. But what about the person who has never learned how to get it? See, there's, 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 you learn how to earn. You got to learn how to earn. So once you begin to learn, then it begins to get a little easier. That makes sense? So, so that's why I'm having the exclusive, because there's some people who are so serious about pushing the agenda forward, so serious about amassing wealth, so serious about doing it so they can make a difference in the community. We need to talk. Multiple sources of residuals. That's right, Coleman. So... Here's the first mentality I came across. I call it the roadside mentality. Everybody put in the comments below, roadside. You got to ask yourself, do I have this philosophy towards wealth? So I call it the roadside mentality. This is the attitude that has no desire or no interest to hear anything about wealth. I consider this to be the complainer. This is the one who can find all the problems but can never look for solutions. Roadside mentality. Ask yourself, am I a person that has a roadside mentality as it relates to wealth? Now, you're here today, so I know you live, you don't have that mentality. But I know it's going to be people who's going to watch this later, and then they're going to start to think, has that been me? 
Have I been the person that's had the roadside mentality? Have I been the person that always complains but never looks for solutions? You, you, you can find a problem. And I call it like this. This is the person that when you look at a window, you're looking outside. It's a beautiful day outside. You know, sun is shining. The birds are tweaking, tweet, tweeping. And everything is like lovely. Like, man, it's beautiful outside. Let's go outside. This is the person that looks through that window and sees none of that beauty and all they see is a dirty spot on the window and you're like of all of that that you can pay attention to you paying attention to that one spot that's dirty this is that person they can always find something wrong but they can hardly ever seem to find something right and this is the person that has no desire to hear about wealth no desire to, to even consider that their, their tentacles you know they don't even buzz when you start talking about making money when they start talking about these different philosophies that people are doing so, so, so you got to ask yourself, do I have a roadside mentality? In other words, have I been, have I been deaf? Have I, have I closed my ears off to prosperity? Have I closed my ears off? Has my, has my heart been hardened to even listen, even hear, even be, be taught something new? And now I'm just wallowing in the mud. I'm just, I'm a Debbie Downer. I'm the, I'm the, I'm, I'm misery loves company. I want to find people who are just broke and busted and disgusted as me. And we can have a, we can have a pity party. That is the roadside mentality. You focus on all your problems, but you can never have the time because you're so focused on your problems to look for solutions. All right, let me go back. So that was the roadside mentality. The attitude that has no desire, no interest at all to hear. Now, here's the deal, guys. As you guys talk to people about Club Millie, you're going to come across people that have no desire and no interest to build wealth. And that's okay because we understand that they are, we're just going to we're going to put them in that category. Oh, that's the roadside mentality and keep it moving. All right, you guys got that? We just go roadside mentality and keep it moving. All right, we don't, we don't want them anyway. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Hakeem? How are you, man? How are you, Edward? Thanks so much for joining. All right, so next, number two, concrete mentality. Once you put that in the comments below, concrete. You got to ask yourself, do, do, do I have this philosophy towards wealth? Do I have this philosophy towards uh, uh, group economics. Do I have this philosophy towards getting rich? Do I have this philosophy towards getting out of debt? Concrete mentality. I said that this is the attitude that shows interest and may even take one step, but they lack commitment. There's a difference between interest and commitment. They won't even get out. They won't get out of their own way. And this is what I consider to be the excuse person. That's right. The excuse person. And their number one excuse is something came up. Make an appointment, post a meet, everything sounds good. They came to the first meeting. Then you're like, okay, let's get started, let's get rolling. Something came up. I got to think about it. I don't know. This is the excuse person. They're going to make every excuse in the book why not to move forward. And I would say this. They operate from a, from a standpoint of excuse because they're operating in fear. It's, 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 it's quite scary to change. You know, if you think about it, like, like I've been broke for so long, I'm, I'm used to it, right? So it's kind of difficult to change and say, you know what? I'm tired of broke, but broke has become my best friend. How many guys know some people who are broke is their best friend? Like, it's like, it's like you broke and you broke and you broke. And whenever something comes around and say, hey, we can do something different. You're like, no, I like broke too much. Broke is my best friend. And this is that person. They, 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 they have an interest, you know, it's, it sounds good. Hey, that sounds good. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. That's a good idea for somebody else. And remember, I told you guys that is possible for them. They know it's possible, but they haven't got to the point where they're saying it's possible for me. They think it's, they're going to watch everybody else. They're going to watch Club Millie blow up. They're going to watch Club Millie go and do things that they, they never saw. And they're going to be like, it was possible. Y'all go ahead. Y'all did it. And they can still be broke. Because they're saying it is possible, but they have not said to themselves, it's possible for me. This is why I talk the way that I talk. <laughs> yeah, you got to get away from those types. So that was the roadside mentality. The person that has no interest, no desire, they ain't going to even hear you. You know, they, they drunk, they high, they whatever. They got so much going on. They, they, they just want some girls or whatever. You know, they, 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 ain't, tr they ain't trying to do nothing right now. That doesn't mean, though, that they won't change. It just means that right now they ain't really trying to hear then you got the concrete person. This person says, I'm interested. That sounds good. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great idea, right? 
They might come to one meeting. They might they might sign up, but they don't show up, right? You'd be like, oh, man, you done took one of the seats from somebody that was interested, that really wanted to come. You done sold out my seats, but you didn't show up. Now that left, left one less seat for somebody who was serious about moving forward. So they sign up, but they don't show up. How many guys know some people that sign up but don't show up? Right? This just concrete mentality. Something came up. Oh, you know, it's always something. But guess what? Nothing ever comes up for them when they really want to do something. If they go to the Super Bowl party, I'm pretty sure nothing's going to come up. Uh-uh, nothing get, I'm, going, I'm getting the Super Bowl party. Nothing's going to come up when it's time for me to go party, when it's time for me to go, uh, you know, entertain myself. But when we start talking about something where we can change not only our, ourselves, but change the generation that follows us, something came up. The concrete mentality. Woo! <laughs> Next. So we went through the roadside mentality. We went through the concrete mentality. Now, I said this. I said the other one that I came across was a weed mentality. That's right. Weed, like growing in the grass type. Weeds. Weeds in your garden. This is the attitude of bad decision making. The one characteristic that they tend to lack is focus. I consider these to be the people that make progress, but seem to always get knocked back down by life. You know, I got a flat tire, there goes my savings, or I put all my eggs in this one basket and that basket had a hole in it. Or simply helping everyone else but themselves. They'll, they are the helpers. They'll do everything else for everybody else, but they find themselves broke, busted, and disgusted. Now, it's a great, great to have charity. It's great to help others. But how can you help others out of what you don't have yourself? Help yourself and then help others. You can do way more if you find yourself in that position. Even though the first position is good, but you want to be in a position where you've helped yourself, so now you have even more time to help others. Now, there are those, these are those that have learned to save a little money, but still need to learn about investing. So again, the one characteristic that they lack is focus. I consider these people to make progress, but they seem to always get back knocked down by life. In other words, Murphy comes, Murphy's Law comes and just slaps them across the head, and then they start to give up. They're like, ah, I got to deal with this again. Uh, you know, they, they complain about every little thing, every little issue that comes up. Instead of saying, it's just an issue, uh, it's just an opportunity for me. It, basically, they don't recognize that it's the enemy really trying to test their will. And this is what happens, man. So if you guys, whoever was with us on the first night, when we had our uh, first session on the, to, to roll out Club Miller, we had some technical problems. And I already knew, like, this is what he does. This is what happens. As soon as you try to move forward, you're going to hit some opposition. And see, there's some people who just dropped off. Like, oh, you know, something wrong or whatever, whatever. They just dropped off the line. There's other people who waited because they understood that this was only a, 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 a temporary setback. And it was, it was a test to see if we was going to push forward and keep on going. So eventually, we figured out the technical difficulties. Eventually, about 10, 15 minutes later, we was rocking and rolling. But the people who dropped off, they missed the information because they lacked focus. They didn't see what was going on behind the scenes. They just thought, oh, you know, whatever they might have thought. But there are some people who believe. There are some people who have faith. There's some people who understood that every time you try something new, every time, and it's going to make an impact. Everybody put in the comments below, impact. Whenever you try anything new that's going to make an impact. Now, you can try something new. It's going to be selfish. It's going to cause you harm. You're not going to get no opposition from that. I'm talking about when you're trying to do something significant and it's going to make an impact, you are going to be met with opposition. It is going to happen. And so you got to be the person that says, I know what's coming. I understand something is coming. I don't know what it is, but I am going to persevere. I'm going to have the resolve to deal with this issue when it comes. Because I got the focus, I see the big picture, and I got the drive, and I know that the idea was given to me for me to, I can't think of the word, for me to, for me to make sure that it happens. Okay? The weed mentality. So you got to ask yourself, do I have this weed mentality? Am I the person who just seems to, oh, I, I make a little progress, but as soon as life hits me, I back up. I got to take a break. I'm done. I don't want to try no more. I, you know, let me go back to being comfortably broke because you lack focus. You won't go through and persevere till you get to the other side. 
do you lack focus? And I think that of the three that we've talked about so far, I have the firm belief that most of our people fall fall in this area. Now I know we got some some we I know we got some roadside people. They don't want to hear nothing we're talking about. I know we got a few concrete people. They 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 got some interest. I know we got a lot of those. Now, I'm just interested. But I think the majority of us fall in this category where we just simply lack focus. We won't see it through. Now, it may not be Club Millie. It may be your own idea. It may be your own goal. It may be your own dream that you just won't see it through because you get hit with opposition and you think that that's God telling you not to go forward. No, 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 no. You would have never got the idea in the first place if God was going to say don't go forward. That is you and your false belief. What that is really saying is, is that, hey, I want to test your resolve. Everybody put in the comments below, resolve. I am testing your resolve to see how serious you are about accomplishing your goal, about accomplishing your dream, about moving forward. It's easy to go back, right? Think about it this way. You are chasing your dream and you come to a hill. You come to the hill, you're in your car, you start riding up, the, you're on your bike, you start riding up the hill. And you know what happened? About halfway up that hill, your legs get tired. You're like, man, I'm about to get off this bike and just walk this thing up. That is, that is, that is, that's, that's what it is. Are you going to keep going till you get to the top of this mountain? Or are you going to hop off the bike? Or are you going to say, man, forget this. I'll try tomorrow and go back down. Which one is it? You on the bike. This is your vehicle towards your dream. You come to a hill. The hill is the opposition. You start making your way up the hill. That's your progress. Are you going to be focused enough to keep pedaling? Keep pedaling. Legs getting tired. I don't know, but I got a dream. I'm going to keep pedaling. I'm, I'm going slow. I'm going one mile an hour, but that's okay. I'm still pedaling. It, it's, it's burning, but I'm going to keep going because my dream, my goal, the thing that I want to accomplish is that important to me. Are you going to keep going when your legs start burning? <laughs> All right, so, so we talked about the roadside mentality. That's the one that has no interest in what we're talking about, no interest in whatever it is that you're talking about. It, it could be anything. It could be a network marketing business. It could be starting a new business. It could be going for popcorn. They just have no interest in whatever it is that you are presenting at that time. Then you got the concrete mentality. That's the person that, that has some interest, right? But they have no commitment. They're not serious. They're just basically like your friends. Ah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll go along. And then they don't show up. You know, they say that you know who your friends are when it's time to move, right? When it's time for you to move, that's when your real friends show up. <laughs> and then we talked about the weed mentality. This is the person that simply just lacks focus. They have the interest. They are committed. They really do want this thing, but they just don't want it bad enough. And oftentimes they find themselves in a position where they're helping everyone else except themselves. So everyone else moves forward. They're a part of the progress or the success of other people, but they look at their life and they're like, well, dang, why? Why I didn't? Because you didn't focus on your goals. You focus on the goals of someone else. And that's okay to help. I'm just saying I want to make sure that as we are building together, that not only is one person's goals getting met, but everyone's goals is getting met. That's why Club Million is so important. Because many of you guys think it's just about money. No, it's not. It's more about education. And when you start being connected to all these people that can help you get to where you want to go, I just had someone hit me up about tutoring. Boom, connected her to two other tutors. And now they are connecting and working together to build up the tutoring industry. See, this is what these are the stuff, these are the conversations that you only have when you join the club. You just kind of looking at it from an out outward perspective wondering how can I can, how can this help me and the question you got to ask yourself is how can I help it so that was the uh, weed mentality and then obviously the last one is going to be that I have for is your fertile soil mentality this is the attitude of the one percent this is the attitude of the five percent that we're trying to connect to these are those that do what wealthy people do they have created wealthy habits which is simple here are the simple habits of the rich they give, they save, and they invest. Those are all, the, these are those that will read a financial book. Yes, the Bible is a financial book. They'll get a financial coach or a mentor, and they have multiple streams of income. The fertile soil person is the attitude of the 
And they practice these three habits. They give, they save, and they invest. Now, when I say give, save, and invest, I'm not always talking about money, right? They give of their time. They invest their time. They give of their money. They invest their money. They give, they save, and they invest. And so now you got to ask yourself, which philosophy do I operate under when it comes to wealth? Am I on the roadside mentality, which I just have no interest in building wealth. I don't even want to hear it. You guys talk about it too much. I unfriend people on Facebook who talk about making money. Are you the concrete mentality? It just means you're interested. Sounds like a good idea, but it's just not for you because you know that it's possible, but you haven't gotten to the point where you realize that it's possible for me. Everybody put in the comments below, you know I love it. It's possible for me. It's, it, it's got to become that. Your dream, your goal, the, the building wealth, group economics, uh, building the black community, it's got to become a position. you got to be in a position where you say that it's not only possible, but it's possible for me. See, I, that's the part I think that we've been missing on that term. It's, it's possible for me. When you can say that with authority, when you can say that with authority, now you know that you're on your way to a better you. And I like to say this. I say that you are investing in your future self. And your future self is going to thank you later for the things that you did today. It's possible for me. Or are you the person that just has the, um, has the uh, weed mentality? You, you, you're interested. You're pretty committed into, in, on the agenda. You're committed to the movement. But you lack focus. And so you're helping everyone else except yourself. Everyone else is moving forward except you. Got to fix that. I want you to be in a position where you're helping people out of your abundance and not out of your need. It's good, but let's get to a place where we're helping people out of our abundance. That makes sense? And then you have your fertile soil. This is the 1%. These are the people that practice the three wealthy habits of save, give, and invest. These are the people that will read a financial book. These are the people that will, uh, will join an investment club or investment group. These are the people that want to be around other people who are talking about money. Are you the 1%? Are you the top 5%? Because that is who we are looking for in Club Millie. Because we're going to be as strong as Ms. Uh, Ms. Shana said. We're going to be as strong as our weakest link. Are you? A 1%. Now, again, guys, I'm reading from something I wrote back in 2014, so I'm just sharing with you where I come from. So you got to ask yourself, what mentality do I have towards wealth? Let's make this very simple. Type 1 is what I call flat broke. Yeah, okay. Flat broke. They don't give, they don't save, and they don't invest. They're just flat broke. Type 2 is the person that's almost broke. This is the person that they give of their time and their money, but they don't save and they don't invest. In other words, they give out of their need, but they don't save and they don't invest. Now, here again is where I think that most people are, and that's just overbroke or job. Just overbroke. They give and they save, but they don't invest. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help people get to the position of number four, which is the wealthy, where they give. They save and they invest. So I want you to free your mind as it relates to money. Free your mind as it relates to wealth. Free your mind as it relates to riches so that your finances will follow. Free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> I got you. You guys remember that info? <laughs> so here's the deal, man. Those are the attitudes of the wealthy. And no matter where you are, you know, whether you're going to be honest and say, hey, I'm a roadside person, but I realize there's other mentalities I want to move on up. Like the Jefferson, I want to move it on up. Or whether you're a concrete person, you realize that you've had interest in a lot of things, but you haven't seen them come to fruition because you had no commitment to them. There is a difference between interest and commitment. And you've probably just been interested in a lot of different stuff. And you just go to and fro, changing all these different ideas because they're just interested. You're just interested in it. Well, you can change that today. Or maybe a person is saying, hey, I got this weed mentality. I just, I simply just lack focus. Everything else I, I'm good with. But I, for some reason, as soon as I get going, I always get knocked back down. I always just seem to just lose it at the most critical point. And it, and, and, and it, and it talks about this, I think, in the Acres of Diamond. 
It's the point that you stop digging that your diamond is on the other side or your oil is on the other side. And then you turn around and go back, say, I'm done. Then the next person come in and they strike that same spot and then oil come out. Have you stopped digging into your very own acres of diamonds? Have you stopped digging into your very own acres of diamonds? Or you're that person that says, hey, I realize all these things, but that ain't me. I'm good on that one. I'm actually in the top 1%. I just need my finance to follow. <laughs> they on their way. <laughs> Well, I'm giving you the opportunity to join us as a group because what we're doing is we are connecting with the top 5% of our community. We are looking for the top 1,000, and we're going to change the world. And, that's, and, you, and you don't hear any stuttering there. That's what we're going to do. Our goal was 100 people or 100 members in February. We're already at 50. We haven't even got to February 15th. So you got to ask yourself, there must be something in the water. There must be something that's going on. So you got to ask yourself, am I ready today to make a $20 decision that will change my life? Am I ready to make a $20 decision that I changed my life? And that's something that you can clearly do or easily do by going to www.ergj.net. So I wanted to share this with you guys today um, because I came across and I was like, man, that's what I was thinking about two years ago. You know, that's what my mind was. That's what I was writing about. So don't think that I just showed up one day and you're getting all of this. No, 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 no. I've been doing this for a little minute. I've been writing about this for a minute. I've been studying this for a little minute. And I've been noticing the differences between the rich and the poor. And it has everything to do with starting right here. Wealth begins in the mind. You must be wealthy in your mind long before you're wealthy in your wallet. Well, today's episode has been brought to you by True Detergent. That's right, black owned and manufactured detergent right here. We're doing free shipping in the Atlanta area. This is another stream of income. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? At any rate, 101 loads for $15. That means it's 15 cents per wash. You give us a call, 678-851-2400. Get your true today. Make the switch. Well, guys, this is ERGJ from ERGJ Enterprise. Sign up for Club Millie. Sign up for the introduction to foreign exchange. Go ahead and sign up for your ERGJ exclusive. I'm going to be doing it towards the end of the month for Black Wealth Month. If you want to sit down and have a conversation and find out how you, too, can quit your job, how you too can build multiple streams of income, I'm going to be sharing with you part of my life, and I'm going to give you my blueprint, and I'm going to help you develop your blueprint as well. Well, guys, you guys have a wonderful evening. Remember this, it takes a village, but it starts with us. <laughs> Let's build as we climb together. Trying to get ready for the Super Bowl. <laughs> For joining the show, we gave a lot of great tips, but it's time to go. Take the knowledge we shared, hope you use it and grow. we we'll see you all there at the next episode of The New Black Wall Street. The New Black.